Hello, this is David Wormsey. In this video, I'm taking a look at the Breeze Cash plugin by Cloudways. This is a free plugin from the WordPress repository. I started trialing it about four months ago, and about a month ago, I converted all of our client sites over to it. I'm really happy with it. It's simple to use, and I understand that it works best when you have Nginx running on your servers, which is true in my case, as I'm using Cloudways and also DigitalOcean with Server Pilot. but I believe Nginx is included on some big name hosters for WordPress like SiteGround, Flywheel, WP Engine, and I'm sure there are others. I thought it might be helpful to share the settings that I use as they're different from the recommended ones by Cloudways. And that's partly because I use a page builder, Beaver Builder in my case. I also thought it might be helpful as well to share why I chose this plugin over others. So I'm gonna come off camera and we'll get started. So for this video, I'm going to use my blog at davidwormsey.com and I've created an article to go with this video, which I will publish as soon as I finish the video. And it includes some screenshots of my settings and why I use those. It's also got some links and a brief explanation about why I changed to Breeze and what I've used before. But I'm going to move straight on to the settings. So I'm going to go to the back end of this site and when you've installed Breeze and activated it, it just adds something to your settings menu over here. I'd like that rather than it being on the main menu. It also adds this to the toolbar, but only when you're in the dashboard view. So if you're at the front end using the page builder or something, you're not going to see it there, which again, I prefer. And your settings are just to clear all of the cache you can clear independently varnish cache to the internal cache and I'll move on to this in a minute. And then we've got settings over here and that's the page I'm on at the moment. So the only thing you really need to get the speed is this Tikton because this is what's going to turn your dynamic install into HTML pages to serve up quickly. It's going to reduce that time to first buy all of that time that it takes to grab things from the database or to process PHP functions. That's all gone and it serves up those HTML pages. So effectively, if you were to turn this on, I think it's going to give you sort of 99% 0.9 perhaps of your speed the rest is really just some additions the next thing you're going to need to think about the default that comes with this is the 1440 minutes which is equivalent of one day before the cache is cleared now I usually increase this previously I used to have this almost to unlimited just so that everybody got the fastest deliverable speed but just thinking about the fact that more people now certainly my clients are going in and using the page builder I'm concerned that when they're saving they might throw out some layout issues or that might not cache very well now I want the cache to clear after a number of days of course this, this is going to be variable it's going to depend on the amount of traffic a site has and how much I think a client is going to go into the site but usually now I have it clear more often just to make sure that there are no display issues that the clients are unaware of the rest is well really as I say you don't need to turn this on minification is something I do with HTML and CSS and also the inline CSS only because in my experience with Beaver Builder and before that it's never caused an issue and it does speed things up slightly I've noticed a difference particularly with the CSS so I include it I used to tick on JavaScript but I discovered along the way and it would often be months down the line after completing a site that certain things were not working well on certain devices on certain browsers so if you really want to play it safe you just leave all of these unticked and also I leave unticked gzip compression now if you go and look at what Cloudway suggests for configuring they say to include this but what is quite interesting is that there is somewhere on their forums there's a guy who seems to know his stuff here, let me just find him, Gulshan Kuma. I hope I've said your name right. He seems to know his stuff and he suggests not to have those on because of the compression and the way that Engine X works. And in fact, this is kind of confirmed by a support question which has gone to Cloudways where they're saying they've added the gzipping and the browser caching 
for those people who don't have nginx so it's not really necessary for speed to have let's just go over there either of these now typically i would have turned on the browser caching and really this is more for vanity let me just go over to some tests that i do i don't usually use pingdom tools if i want to do some serious testing but it's quite handy because it also pulls in the Google page speed score. And I know that a lot of people get caught up in this. Now, the thing is about it, it's really got nothing to do with speed. This is your speed and all that matters. This is just giving you some suggestions based on what the output is. So you need to know what you're doing with it. But of course, a lot of people hold a lot of store by this. Maybe they want to show it to clients. So they like to have browser caching. This is what it looks like with the same test done without it on. And as you can see, I've got an F score there. So this has brought this score down to B. But in fact, on this test, it's actually loaded quicker. So most of the time, I probably will not go for the browser caching. The reason that I mostly are going to be turning this off now is that we've got clients going in using the page builder and this is what is most likely to interfere with what they are seeing in the display. And I don't have to keep saying, have you F5'd your page all the time to people? So I've gone for keeping it to the least problems I can have. When we come to advanced options, I don't touch these. When I think Breeze came out, it didn't support WooCommerce. So you would have needed then to have added in pages like your cart page to not be cached and your checkout pages. Now you don't need to. It does that automatically. Perhaps if you're using something else where you don't need a cache, you might need to come over here. I don't do any of the grouping of the files. Concatenation, I think, is the proper term for it. I think this just adds more confusion. I've had issues when I've tried to get into that stuff before, so I don't touch it. I don't see a great increase for doing that. And I don't delay the delivery of any of the files as well in the load. So any of that stuff. We've got this section here for clearing out the database. This is something really mostly for my clients to do if they want to come in and clear any of these things out. I can't see they can do too much damage unless they remove their post revisions while they're working on something. That's about the only thing they could do. Um, I'm likely to go in once in a while into the back ends directly of their sites and change things. So I might go and clear this out myself. CDN content delivery network is something that we don't need to use because largely we're serving people who are in the same country as our server. So we don't need to add that, but it's simple to do that. And finally, on to Varnish now. If you're with Cloudways, Varnish is a caching that is added on the server side and it's on by default. I turn it off only on the basis of reports that I've heard from other people who use page builders saying that they can have kind of caching issues. So I turn it off at the Cloudways end and so I turn it off here because it's set by default. So if you're not using Varnish on your servers, then make sure that you untick this one here, particularly if you're using a page builder, certainly Beaver Builder, if you're trying to publish while this is on, there's a bit of hanging before it saves the page out because it's trying to clear this cache at the same time and it can't do it. So that gets rid of that. And that's pretty much it for my settings. Let me just quickly go back to my blog article and tell you why I picked this cache in my history. I must say a quick thanks. I think I put it down the bottom here to my friend Clark Marshall from Blue Dog Digital. He was the first person I saw who was moving from WP Rocket to Breeze with a significant number of client sites that he managed and similar software. And he was really happy with Breeze and thought it was giving him quicker speeds. So that made me look into it. And what happened is I was using WP Rocket, very happy with it for certainly four years, maybe five years with them. But I was due for renewal and they made some big changes recently and that made me rethink. They removed the white labeling, which is something I did use. And so I changed the WP Rocket name to cash to make it easy for clients, not to hide that we were using WP Rocket. But I believe that stopped all updates coming to us. And I think these updates then not coming created some problems because we got a number of layout issues that kept repeating. I had to keep going in and clearing the cache on those. So that made me think about that. Also, I was 
there's some changes have happened in WP Rocket since I've had it. There's more options now. And as I'm moving more towards teaching clients to be able to manage these things themselves, I wanted the easiest and simple options. So Breeze became that as well. And there was a few little things that bugged me about the advertising of their other products to our client sites, really, which was not relevant to advertise their image optimization to our clients because they're not interested in it. I might be interested. And it was if I was going to update there was going to be a big change to their new branded UI which again would be quite a departure from what WordPress looks like and what clients are used to so for all of that I decided that there was no cost justification because the speeds in my tests were better with Breeze or at least the same as WP Rocket but of course, I did lose some things. I use Manage WP to manage all of our sites, and there is an extension for WP Rocket that allows me to change settings and clear all the cache globally, so I don't have that any longer. Clients are not able now to clear the cache on an individual page or post, as they could do with WP Rocket, and I'm sure there are other things that people find quite useful in it. So I don't want to be a downer on WP Rocket. I just wanted to explain why I changed it. I think it's a, a very good plugin. And I think in many servers, it's going to outperform Breeze as well. So at the same time I was doing this, it was quite interesting. There was an article that came out by WP Johnny. He's somebody in a lot of Facebook groups that I'm in, and he did this great review. What a lot of work he's done to test out various different caching plugins on different environments. And in fact, when I started testing Breeze and hadn't actually gone and tested it on uh, Engine X browser, let's just see if I can find that there. But he did later and confirmed really what we were saying that on his test, Breeze was coming out as faster than WP Rocket and it does on light speed as well but if we take a look at just apache here we'll see that wp rocket comes above breeze at least on his test there so i'm pretty sure that wp rocket is a good plugin still to have i'm certainly i was happy with it over my time just a few things that i didn't particularly like and i knew i was going to have to make all of these changes recently and it wouldn't have been the first time with WP Rocket that I don't need to go manually make these changes. So it just seemed like a good chance to uh, change the plugin and try something else. Also, I did test because WP Johnny always found that Swift performance was always coming out on top for all of his tests and he really liked it. And I tested that out on a couple of sites and undoubtedly it was the fastest. It shaved off quite a bit of time, but it has an awful lot of settings in it. It does an awful lot of things. I found that the free version and other people reported that was heavy on CPU usage, which is important to us because we are doing the hosting for our clients. So I, I want to avoid that as much as possible. And particularly at the moment, I found that since there have been some changes to DigitalOcean, it tended to peak anyway high on CPU. So I wanted to avoid issues with that. It was just too complex for our clients. And I also had a one layout issue with it as well. I noticed in their groups that some people were reporting some issues, obviously because there's a lot of settings to run through and there's a lot of development going on. But I think it looks to be a pretty good plugin. And if your priority is shaving off the most milliseconds, then it's definitely one to check out. I also checked out WP Fastest Cache because that was recommended a couple of times to me, but I just found it slower on our servers quite by quite a lot as well and I tried to play around with all the different settings I also didn't like the UI with it and the fact that it put I think a little leopard or something like that in the main navigation so I wasn't keen on having that I also retested what I used before WP Rocket and that was super cache which was I thought a fabulous plugin never gave me any issues but it, again it wasn't as fast as using Breeze. And that is pretty much my experience with caching plugins. Many, many years ago, I tried W3 Total Cache because it was everyone's favorite and did everything. But probably due to my ignorance, it gave me a lot of problems and I just swapped that out for Super Cache. And that's it. That's all I know. If you've got anything else you can add, I will certainly add it to this blog post. But that's me done for this video. Thank you very much for listening to me. If you like this, then please give me a thumbs up on YouTube. If you like these kind of videos, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Hope you have a brilliant day and I hope to talk to you again soon. I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye.